Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about low-cost airline Ryanair plans to close the vast majority of its data centres over the next three years as it moves its infrastructure to cloud with Amazon Web Services. Hi, Dave. Great to see you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, this is a great topic. I think we're you know looking at uh, these micro industries, the transportation industries, and their adoption of cloud being being really, you know, kind of a use case for the bigger guys. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this topic. Yes, yeah, very interesting topic, and, and it affects millions and millions of people on a daily basis, doesn't it? So should airline CEOs push the movement to cloud and push for faster adoption? Do you think? Yeah, obviously, yes. Um, the, the reason is pretty compelling because if you think about processes, you know, that are done within airlines, it's pretty simple. You, you book people on, you basically manage passengers, you manage luggage, you manage airport operations or, excuse me, uh, air transportation operations. All these sorts of things just really come into play. And the reality is your data center doesn't have to be in a central location or do you need a data center. And also the reality is you're not, you know, holding you know key government secrets inside your servers and so security isn't going to be much of an issue so given the fact that it's uh, pretty well known and pretty well adopted best practices and processes it's pretty easy to automate in the cloud and also you can use lots of SaaS solutions uh, even some from the uh, you know existing travel providers out there services they're already using and getting the systems hosted in somewhere else where they don't have to you know pay for you know, uh, 10,000 square foot data centers, or this, these guys probably have, uh, you know, 300,000 square foot data centers that they're pay paying for millions of dollars a year. So number one, get out of the, get out of the data center, shut them down. Um, we can find platform analogs in the cloud pretty easy, uh, typically for what you're doing. And ultimately it's gonna save you a ton, you know, ton of money uh, over time. Uh, it's not gonna be, you know, a game changer, we're gonna be able to reduce the price of an airline ticket, uh, you know, down to $50 for these guys, but it's gonna be increased profitability, it's gonna increase customer satisfaction, it's gonna increase employee satisfaction. Uh, uh, servers are always problems. You know, I heard that today in a, in a panel I was sitting on in Ed Edmonton. Um, and ultimately, you know, it's gonna make you a better business. The, the great thing about these this thing as well is not necessarily the, the operational savings that they're gonna make are saved, but the fact of the matter is they're going to have the agility aspect of it. So their ability to get into new markets, expand their service, buy their airlines, you know, really kind of change their IT infrastructure around the needs of the business is really going to be the most compelling advantage of this stuff. And so other airlines, they're following, but they're not following very fast. The major carriers in the United States, and by the way, Ryanair is a pretty big carrier in Europe, uh, but the major carriers in the United States, you know, the Deltas and the Uniteds and things like that, they're certainly making the migration over to cloud, but there's no reason they can't make something like aggressive like this. We're going to shut down the data centers and start making the move in three years and get a significant amount of infrastructure out there. The other thing is European Airlines, in terms of service, is far superior to the United States. You know, I would like to see the United States catching up in the fact that, uh, you know, throwing peanuts us, peanuts at us in a and a, a cup of water, you know, really doesn't account for, uh, you know, service on some of these flights and co. So you fly in those European airlines and even the Asian airlines, which I did in the last few weeks, you know, and almost, uh, you know, put you into tears when you get back on a U.S. airline. So uh, maybe they can get the services up as well. Yeah, that would be a great thing, wouldn't it? You just have interest, though. One thing that, that um, springs to mind for me is why do you think it's taken so long for airlines to suddenly want to switch to cloud? I think it's they're typically conservative businesses and they're cheap. They have to be because their margins, are, like I said, are razor thin. And so if they're going to move into a infrastructure like this, they're waiting for other people to, in essence, be successful at it first. So they're not very aggressive. They're risk adverse. Uh, they're very cost sensitive. And there has to be some sort of cost and uh, cost that goes in the equation of migrating to the cloud. They're very sensitive about uh, data issues are very sensitive about outages, things like that. I wrote a story in uh, InfoWorld, um, I think like, had it had been like eight years ago, uh, when I was promoting the fact that each, actually United had every system in the country go down. And I was stuck actually in Canada at the time, 
uh, waiting for a flight because it couldn't verify I had a ticket. And so, you know, everybody was inconvenienced. Of course, the airline lost millions and millions of dollars and the passengers like me were frustrated. When the reality is if they just migrated into the cloud, the network issue that they had within their data center would have been a matter of redundancy and they could have worked around the issue and there would have been no outages. And plus they could run the infrastructure at about 50% of the cost they're doing now. So I didn't understand why they didn't make the move then. And I think people saw the writing on the wall in terms of modernization of the systems and moving into more reduced redundant infrastructure and higher performance elastic computing were able to scale up and scale down as needed. And it's just a good idea with something as simple as an airline business. Now, if it's a bank, there's more moving parts. If it's a, a healthcare system, there's more moving parts. There's regulations to consider. And certainly you know, the airlines regulated, but the data on the, on the airline systems is uh, you know, not uh, not protected by uh, you know privacy laws, things like that. They have to basically run by policies and uh, you know disclosure laws and things like that. And so, go ahead and make the move because you're not doing much, and you might as well not do much on another set of infrastructures. It's going to be much more efficient. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I mean, my, the, the Ryanair are actually migrating, aren't they, from my, um, Microsoft SQL servers? Um, to Amazon Aura, so it's um, it's going to be uh, it's a it's a big deal, really, considering you think Ryanair, you know, send out twenty two million emails a day to customers regarding travel booking and sales. So it's it's a really big move, and like you say, it really does give them that agility and stability, and offering that robust solution with their move to the AWS cloud, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, running an airline's got enough headaches, um, especially the customer service issues. I think most of them are dealing with with cancel flights and weather and things like that. You know, why would you want to have anything else complicate your business? Why would you want to own servers? You know, why, why would you want to own software? You know, why would you want to have people in a data center that are running around? And why would you want to put your business at risk in the fact that a lot of those things are going to be fallible um, because, the you know, hardware, software, things go wrong. And not that it won't go wrong in the cloud, but it's much less likely with the redundancy that they have, you're gonna run the same risk of outages. And by the way, your data is more secure in the cloud. We've proven that for the last few years. You're gonna have better performance and much, much, much lower costs. So like I said, other airlines, what are you waiting for? You know, get get on the stick. And if anybody, you know, is listening to this uh, in the C-suites within an airlines listening to this, you should, you know, go grab your CIO around the throat and tell him or her to get, get busy and start, uh, you know, moving to more efficient infrastructures, namely the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Although there's probably some uh, someone in HR that might have something to say about grabbing another member of staff around the throat, Dave, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I don't mean really grab them around the throat. I mean, just, just kind of have the come to Jesus talk with them about, uh, about uh, you know, leveraging the right technology at the right time to make the business optimized. And it's going to be very important. I think a lot of these airlines are going to find that they're nor they're going to, industries are going to be normalized. Startups are going to get in there and do a much better job than they can do uh, because they're able to be born in the cloud and have uh, agile architectures out of the gate, and they're going to eat their lunch. I mean, in the States, we have Southwest, we have JetBlue, we have you know, all these various startup airlines that are you know, absolutely you know, going like gangbusters because because they started out being much more efficient and modern and they were able to leverage technology to their advantage, not dealing with you know systems that are 30 years old and data centers that are 30 years old, just eating power and forming the planet. So let's get out of that business, guys. Yeah, very well said, Dave. And, and I, I completely believe you, you didn't mean go and grab anyone by the throat. So I'm 100%, you're, you're just not that kind of guy. <laughs> I, I, I did, I did, Brad. You gotta get someone's attention somehow. That's legal in Australia, isn't it? Everything's legal in Australia. <laughs> well, so you can punch well, your coworker like once a week, as long as you don't do it twice, you're good. Yeah. Yes, a, a friendly punch in the face for doing so well. Yeah, the, you know, the, we've we've got so many uh, rewards for KPIs over here. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, like you said, you know, maybe this uh, seeing Ryanair succeed in the AWS cloud is uh, will become the tipping point for we'd like to think for um, every airline to be able to offer the uh, a fluid customer service and an experience that everyone deserves when flying. There's really no excuse nowadays, is there? Yeah, I mean, they're all moving to cloud some way, some, but they're just doing so so slowly. I mean, it's just you know, glacier slow, uh, and these guys are basically putting a line in the sand. We're not going to mess around. This is going to be a three-year period of time, which I think is a reasonable amount of time to move this airline this size 
and get their infrastructure into the cloud. Now, obviously, the older airlines have legacy systems and old, old reservation systems we have to deal with, but those can be managed. You know, it's a matter of just like pointing the uh, IT in the right direction and getting things done. Yeah, 100%. Well, thanks, Dave. Thanks for being a part of the C-Suite show this week. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for next week. We've got some really cool stuff lined up. Um, but, yeah, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. As I'm on Instagram and Facebook, uh, YouTube, obviously, which is what you're watching now, and LinkedIn. So thanks again for watching. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on the future videos and the previous ones. Thanks for watching, everyone.